Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet you today. Wonderful name of Jesus. And on this very special day, Resurrection Sunday, what a great time it is to be in the house of God. Maybe you're not in the house of God, but your house has become a place of worship. Amen. So we salute you and extend precious and holy greetings on behalf of my wife, Pastor Jillian, and certainly the entire Emmanuel Apostolic Church sends greetings to those who are joining us today by live stream. Those who are watching us from the website at eacportmore.com. If you're on Facebook, wherever you are this morning, this is the day the Lord has made. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and praise the name of the Lord. I want to begin with prayer this morning. And so I invite you to bow your heads with me as we ask God's blessings on this word. Father, we thank you. We honor you and we glorify your name. This is Resurrection Sunday. And because you live, we can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. And so, Father, we thank you for this blessed hope. We pray that this word will be a blessing to the hearts of those who are hearing in the mighty name of Jesus, we glorify you and we give you thanks and praise. And everybody said, Amen. Amen, amen, amen. There are three days that could be called the three greatest days in history. And I know there are many holidays that we will celebrate all our lives. I know there are many days that many of us may think are special days. And yes, we could justify that. But there are three days that will be celebrated for all eternity. Three of the greatest Days in history. Today is Resurrection Sunday. And that could be classified as one of them. But we can go back. We can go back. We can go back. And as we go back, we look even in Luke chapter 2 and verse 7. Where the word of God says. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That, my friend, I submit to you, is the first of the three greatest days in history. Then in Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 32 and going down to 34, we read, when they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then in Matthew 24 and verse 44, it says, therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour. As ye think not, the Son of Man will come. Oh yes. Oh yes. The cradle, the cross, and the crown. I want to challenge you today to consider the whole story of Jesus. Not just his death, not just his birth, not just his resurrection, not just the rapture, not just when he shall be crowned as king of kings, but the whole entire picture. To get the full context of what he means to this world, of what he means to civilization. But why the cradle, the cross, and the return? How did this ever come about? 
Why was there a need for all this? Beloved, please understand. This was necessary because the whole focus was you and I. He was focusing on you. He was focusing on me. No wonder the song says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And no wonder John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Now we look in Ephesians chapter 3, and we see in verse 18, it says, and 19, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love. Of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So I invite you to take a panoramic view with me today of Jesus' life, and let's let's see what lessons we can learn. Because when we look at the cradle. What we see is God's intervention on behalf of mankind. He inserted himself into man's affairs. Oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to go to the cross, but he did. So he inserted himself as an infant. And in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made of the law, to redeem you and I who were under the law. So if you think about it today, the Old Testament is filled with object lessons, uh, teaching men uh, of their need for God. But they just would not learn from them. People see it. And ignore it. You can accept it or you can reject it at your peril, but it is there. It is there. Somebody say it is there. But today's focus is not going to be on the cradle or even so much the crown, the return of our king. Today's focus is going to be on the greatest Sunday in history. Ah, yes. So we spoke about three of the greatest days in history, but today we're focusing on one of these great days, and it's the greatest Sunday in history. Can I get an amen here, somebody? Praise God. See, in verses 1 to 4 of Matthew 28, if you travel with me to Matthew chapter 28, it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. My God, what an event! What, what, what a picture. Verse 3 says, his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear, verse 4 says, of him, the keepers did shake. In other words, they trembled and became as dead men. They were so astonished. They were shocked. Out of their senses. And I want you to know this morning. The stone was not rolled away. To let Jesus out. The stone was rolled away. To let people in. So they could see the empty tomb. Can I tell you this morning. This is what separates Christianity from every other religion. Oh, I respect your beliefs. I respect your religion. But when you go 
to the tomb of Confucius. He, his bones should still be there. You go to the tomb of Muhammad. His bones should still be there unless they removed it. But when you go to the tomb of Jesus, ain't no bones in those tombs. Because he's not there. He's not there. And this was the message that came out of this miracle. He was not there. They looked and when they looked in the tomb, it was empty. Jesus was gone. They had placed him there, but the time came for him to rise again. Because he said, destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. Can I tell you? Jesus rebuilt the temple that was destroyed. When they put him on the cross, hung him high, stretched him wide, he bowed his head and for you and for me he died. But when they took him to the tomb, oh my goodness, on the greatest day, the greatest Sunday in history, he came back from the grave. And when they rolled the stone away, when the angel rolled the stone away, my God, and sat upon it, they were able to look in and couldn't see him. He was gone. Somebody said he was gone. Yes, he was gone. He was gone. He was gone. And you see, that led now to a, a, a miracle that is just mind-boggling. They, they were even thinking that maybe his disciples had removed his body. But when you look now at verse 5 to 7 of Matthew 28, it says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Oh, yes. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. This is the message of the gospel. This is the message of the church. This is the message of Christianity. Jesus is no longer in the tomb. It's Resurrection Sunday. You might as well believe and understand. He is not. In the tomb he is no longer in the grave he is risen he is risen I thank God today that he's alive my Jesus is alive and because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone can you put your hands together and praise God somebody Jesus was risen from the dead and the disciples needed to be told. So the angel said, go and tell his disciples. They need to hear because they were in fear. They were in trepidation. They saw him going up to Golgotha. They could not accept it. They could not process it in their minds. They thought that he had come as a Messiah that would set up his earthly kingdom in their day so when he told them he had to go through this uh, they could not accept it uh, they could not believe it but when he went to the cross uh, they disappeared and they they were ashamed and they thought this was the end but let me tell you it's not how you begin it's how you end and if you think think that the cross was the end then think again because it was just the beginning oh come on somebody say the cross was just the beginning yes it was just the beginning Jesus rose from the dead the disciples needed to know because this is the message that liberates sinners from sin this is the message that turns a crooked heart into a straight path this is the message that turns someone from their 
from their sinful ways to a way of God. And I declare unto you today, I have experienced this way. Can I get a witness here? Is there anybody watching today? You can lift your hand and say, I am a witness. I am a witness. Oh, thank God I am a witness. He lives. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. Yes, he does. He lives within my heart. I'm telling you today, don't try to tell me that God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me that God is dead. He lives within my heart. He woke me up this morning and started me on my way I know that he lives you can't make me doubt him I know too much about him somebody put your hands together and say yes this is why now in verse 8 to 10 it says and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy notice fear and great joy what emotions mixed together look at that fear for what they had just seen fear for what they had just heard but joy at the oh my god i'm telling you no wonder you have to serve god you have to have the fear of god the fear of god is necessary in our worship experience in our relationship with god you have to have the fear of God but it's mixed with joy so it's not fear as in afraid oh they were not afraid they got a witness they got a word they were on their way to tell the disciples of the good news so they were f in fear because of the experience they just had they were in fear because of what they had just seen and the greatness of all of this so they were in fear but their hearts were also overshadowed with joy i'm telling you this is why in the midst of trials you can still have joy this is why in the midst of depression you can still have joy oh my god you look like a joyful depressed person does that make sense yes because sometimes i feel down sometimes i feel like giving up sometimes i don't feel like how i should feel but i've got a joy deep down on the inside that keeps me going i've got a joy deep down on the inside that keeps telling me to go on i've got a joy deep down on the inside that keeps telling me I can make it if I just take another step you see the reasons we fail sometimes is that we give up but we give up too soon all you've got to do is keep on stepping keep on going it's gonna be all right somebody put your hands together and say amen Oh my God. So they said, Jesus. Then said Jesus in verse 10. Hallelujah. Unto them. Be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren. That they go into Galilee. And there shall they see me. <laughs> ah, yes. Uh, hallelujah. What an experience. Uh, you see, when Jesus revealed himself to the women who came to the tomb, uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, this is why we allow our women to preach. This is why we allow our women to teach. Uh, they were the first carriers of the good news of the gospel. Uh, and there's neither male nor female in God's eyes. Oh yes, I understand the protocols. I know. But this is a situation where the women were the first heralders 
of the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So what a manifestation they had. It brought joy to their hearts. I'm telling you today, when you have a manifestation of the Lord himself, the joy that Jesus brings is going to be yours. I speak joy in your life on this Easter Sunday. I speak joy in your life on this Resurrection Sunday. I know you would prefer to be in the house of God on this Resurrection Sunday. But I speak joy. I speak joy. I speak joy in your circumstance. You may be at home alone, but you've got joy you may be at home with your family but you've got joy speak it uh, declare it uh, receive it uh, walk around your house uh, and declare the joy of the lord uh, is my strength uh, i may be broke uh, busted and disgusted uh, but i've got the joy that jesus gives uh, can somebody say yes uh, say yes uh, say yes this is the greatest Sunday in history the day that Jesus came back from the grave and because he came back I have hope I have hope put your hands together and praise him now look at verse 11 to 15 and look at the misinformation that took place now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done and when they were assembled with the elders watch this watch this watch this when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers. My God. Talk about bribery. Saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. <laughs> Oh my God, the devil didn't want the message that Jesus resurrected from the grave to come to pass. He didn't want people to know that Jesus really came back just like he said he would. But I don't care how much money you pay, the soldiers could say what they want to say. Because verse 14 says, and if this comes to the governor's ears we will persuade him and secure you in other words we'll cover your lie if if it gets to the governor that you you were really fabricating a story we will cover you so they took the money and did verse 15 says they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews uh, sorry, until this day, there was a cover-up uh, of the truth by the authorities. Uh, there is still today a cover-up of the truth uh, by authorities. They don't want you to know the truth about the gospel. Uh, they don't want you to know the truth about Jesus Christ. Uh, and they are trying to cover it up but you can't cover this up because this thing was not done in a corner you can't cover this up because Jesus is alive too many people know that he's alive can I get a witness out there in cyberspace are you witnessing right now 
that Jesus is alive, then lift your hand and say, he lives. He lives within my soul. Yes, they can't cover this up. You can't cover this up. This thing is real. This thing is genuine. This thing is permanent. For Jesus is God. And it's getting out all over the world. He is alive and he's the only true potentate. He's the only true and living God. Say yes. Say yes. Put your hands together and say yes. My, my, my. Now look at verse 16 to 20. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Lord have mercy. What's wrong with the disciples man? What's wrong with disciples? They doubted him before and he's now alive again. And they're still doubting. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And so the mandate was given. The gospel of Jesus Christ must be preached all over the world. It must reach, my God, every corner of the earth. The word is to be reached with the gospel. Go ye therefore and teach some nations? No. Go ye therefore and teach black nations? No. Go ye therefore and teach European? No. All nations. Somebody say all nations. So whether you're black or white, whether you're rich or poor, Whatever your status in life is, I give you Jesus. I declare that he is the only Savior. I declare that he is the only one that can satisfy your soul. Jesus died for your sins, sir. Jesus died died for your sins mother why don't you say yes why don't you accept him he wants to save you he wants to turn your life around he wants to give you joy he wants to give you peace i'm talking about the greatest sunday in history today is resurrection sunday if he didn't come back from the grave where would i be today where would i be without jesus i would be lost i would be undone not having christ in my life but thank god he reached down and saved me thank God he reached down and picked me up and turned me around I have a right to the tree of life I have a right to clap my hands I have a right to stump my feet because Jesus is alive in me and I have a hope that I cherish not in vain I have a hope that one day when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound I'm gonna rise to see him if I'm alive I shall be caught up together with them in the clouds but if I'm dead I'm gonna come back from the grave because up from the grave Jesus arose and because he arose 
I will arise. How many are looking for that great day? I'm telling you tonight, I'm about done preaching right now. But I'm telling you, he's coming back again. He went away not to stay. He's coming back again. Are you ready? This is Resurrection Sunday. This is Easter Sunday. This is the day for you to say yes to the Lord. Somebody put your hands together and praise him. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord with me, everybody. The greatest Sunday in history. The day when he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, what a great day. What a great day. And I declare in your life today, everything that's dead, every vision, mm -hmm, hear me, every vision, every prophecy in your life that was spoken over your life, sir, every prophecy that was spoken over your life, man, this is Resurrection Sunday. You thought it was dead. God said to tell you, no, it's not dead. Your dream is not dead. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop believing. God is about to bring the fulfillment of that prophecy in your life. Yes, he is. Are you ready? Are you ready for an end time move of God? Are you ready for a mighty move of God in your life? This is the greatest Sunday in your life. You have the power. You have the key to make it just that. Will you rise with me? I know you're at home chilling. But we sent out a WhatsApp message. As to how to attend online church. Don't you sit there in your pajamas like, you know, you're just chilling. You're in church. We're bringing church to you. You can't come, but we're coming to you. Get up and put on your clothes like you're going to church. Yeah. Take a shower. Get up. On Sunday mornings when we're doing this. Get dressed, man. Get the family together. Watch it on the biggest screen. Don't just watch it on your little phone. Everybody on their phone. Four or five phones. In it. Get together, man. For where two or three are gathered. You're in your bedroom and they're in their bedroom and somebody else in the kitchen. That's not gathered. That's not a gathering. So we can't come together in our thousands, but gather in your house. With your household. Hey! And sing like you never sang before. Worship like you never worshiped before. <laughs> Praise God like you never praised him before. Because this... It's the greatest Sunday in history. Resurrection Sunday. I speak the blessings of God over you. I seal the prophecies. I seal the word of God in your life. Every vision, everything that God has spoken to you, it's coming to pass. The pandemic is just a parenthesis. You know, brackets. But God is going to come through for you. And even in the pandemic, some of you are receiving what God spoke to you right now. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for these three great days in history. The cradle. The cross. And eventually the crown. Which is yet to come. We look forward to that great and blessed day. When you will return. And establish your kingdom. And be crowned Lord of lords. King of kings. Oh mighty king. We pray your blessings right now. On everyone that's watching. That mother that is crying and struggling. And is not sure. How tomorrow is going to go. I speak a miracle. Even as there was a miracle in Matthew 28. The stone was rolled away. And oh God you. You appeared unto the women. He's not here. Let that mother know you are here in her dilemma. I speak it now, God. I declare it in Jesus' 
mighty name and provide for everyone who is in need. Break chains, break chains and destroy yokes. Heal the sick. Father, we speak healing, 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 healing in the name of Jesus. You are healed. How many need healing? Raise your hand and receive it right now, right now. The greatest Sunday in history. Raise your hand and receive your healing. Come on, claim it. You don't feel like it. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's what you know. If you know that you know that you know that you know that God is a healer, raise your hand right now and claim it. Oh, the pain may still be in the back, but stand up and do something you couldn't do before. Bend over. You couldn't bend before, but stand the pain in your hand. You couldn't raise your hand over your head. Come on, stand up and raise your hand. I'm, I'm talking to you. Yeah, stand up and raise your hand right over your head right now. In the name of Jesus, miracles. Come on. God is trying to prove to you that you don't have to be in the building called the church to experience the miraculous. <laughs> so if, if it happens to you on Monday, well, you're going to wait until Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's why somebody says the church will be open every day. And I agree. But if you can't come to the church, you can still have the church come to you. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders. Not let him go to the church. Let him call for the elders. I'll lay hands on you virtually today by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I declare healing in your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Come on.